Hi, great family! Welcome to the third episode of the Hans for Life podcast. As always, we are Maya and Shanna. Hi! And we so really hope you have enjoyed the first two episodes that we put out for you guys. In today's episode, um, we are taking you uh, to a family at Rarangi Beach, which is quite close to Hans for Life. Uh, a lovely couple, aren't they? Very sweet. Fred and, and uh, Linda, they have adopted Harry. And you would see how Harry lives there and how he has found his forever home there. Very lucky boy. Very lucky. <laughs> so lucky. I'm so jealous. <laughs> yeah. And then? And then we have an expert segment on the history of greyhounds, uh, which I thought was extremely fascinating. And I hope you guys all really enjoy. Please let me know if you want to add anything to it. Um, and yeah, and then after that... After we have the history, um, actually only the part one, right? Yes, so part the, one. The part history one. comes in two parts, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% sure when I'm going to put in part two, um, but it will be at some point. So the first, uh, the history we are covering in this episode is going from way back thousands of years. Yeah, uh, thousands, the, approximately 8,000. We're talking like uh, Egyptian, 8, ancient years Egyptian times. To the Renaissance, right? Yeah, to, all through to the Renaissance and then that's where I stop. And this a second part would be taking us from the Renaissance to the modern times of the Greyhound. Correct, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yay. Alrighty, so after the history segment, we have an awesome how-to segment of how to draw the illustrated, how to digitally draw the illustrated greyhounds that you see on the um, on the front of the episode before you watch it, and you also see it pop up when we introduce um, the greyhound that we've interviewed. So Maya does a really good job of them. They're so cool and I was fascinated watching it back because I always wanted to know how to do it. Um, so that's our how-to segment this week and then we've got... Oh, let me add something to oh, that. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Just briefly, because um, not that you think I'm an illustrator or something, right? I'm by no means uh, a, di a digital artist or you know, like I cannot draw. <laughs> I always I thought I cannot draw. draw and I never draw it. Um, but uh, since I have my new toy, the iPad Pro, mm, very cool, and this magic pen, and I discovered this app, uh, Procreate, I started to doodle around and then I really wanted to know how to use it and I made some Skillshare courses. Yeah. And that was actually great. And I really learned a very simple way to do digital illustration. Um, and I was fascinated and I started to draw an animal every day. Yeah. And then uh, when I had like 20 or 25 animal illustrations done, then I started to uh, go into the greyhounds. And um, and that's what I, I'm going to share with you. So I assure you, everybody can do that if you have a, a tablet and the pen and the, mm -hmm. the app, which is quite inexpensive. It has It's not like like, you know, Photoshop. After the how-to segment, um, we are introducing you to our foster of the fortnight, which is Bruce. Bruce. I love Bruce so much. He's so sweet. Um, so he is available for adoption um, and he is, everything is in this segment, but basically he's a four-year-old male and he's available for adoption and he is probably one of the sweetest, most oldest souls of the greyhounds I've ever met. He's very, very wonderful. So Although he's not even old, he's only four. No, he's not. He is four, but he just has this way about him that's just so calming and chill. Yeah. Yeah, he's very sweet. Yeah, and then what actually happened uh, during the week? Oh, so during the week, um, now that we mentioned Bruce, um, we actually um, rehomed Bruce's sister, Sprite. Um, we can pop in a picture here of her. Yeah. Um, she was is a beautiful brindle girl and she came to our kennels with Bruce um, and she went to a home with a lovely lovely man in Westport um, and he she walked in and she saw him and she knew she had a job and a human and she just was just attached at the hip pretty much straight away um, and he had cats which I found very fascinating because um, I've never really seen a first interaction with a greyhound and a cat um, and she just had her muzzle on obviously and she just strolled up to the cat. It was a big cat 
Um, and she just strolled up to the cat and sniffed him and that was the end of the story. And the cat was actually better with her than it was with me. I tried to pet the cat and it was like, yeah, nasty. Um, but that was really fascinating and it was really, really sweet. It was just so sweet um, to see her get rehomed. And then... What are we and doing we were actually um, going with our tour van, mm -hmm. the Hounds for Life. Hounds for um, Life on tour. On tour van. You can follow that hashtag. Mm -hmm. It's a real hashtag now. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I'm not sure how many people are actually using it though. Yeah. So we took our tour van to the West Coast, um, where um, the new owner of a Sprite is residing. Mm -hmm. And we took the chance to spend another day there and took heaps of footage about this very unique and beautiful mm -hmm. part of uh, the South Island of New Zealand. Actually, I think it is the most beautiful road and I've traveled a lot yeah. uh, that I've ever been on, this Nikau road. Yeah, yeah, that the was Nikau's really cool. that are the only uh, endemic uh, pl palm trees that New Zealand yeah. has. Um, absolutely stunning, but we were talking about them. So we're yeah. deciding to have a segment uh, featuring the West Coast. Yeah. And we went to a very interesting um, woman there um, and made an interview that is all coming up. Yeah, um, it's a sec it's top secret. It's top secret, yeah. but it's awesome. We are looking so forward mm. to, to show, you, show you our trip to the West Coast. Yeah, yeah so that's what, um, beside all the work we did on the podcast, of course, um, yeah. we spent our last two weeks, right? Yeah, and we also, so we rehomed Sprite um, and we also rehomed... Um, a boy named Tiger. Yes. And he has gone to Nelson and he is with a family with four children and he seems to be fitting in so well. He's very sweet. Um, so we actually rehomed two greyhounds within two weeks, which yeah. is pretty cool. Awesome. It was really satisfying to see yeah. and to have them go to their yeah. homes. Yeah. Um, and very different homes, by the way. Very different yeah. homes, yeah. Trev is, is, is single. He yep. lives on his own mm -hmm. um, and was very much looking forward to Sprite yeah. because he had a, quite a sad story to tell and uh, for him it was kind of wonderful to, to have a new companion. It really was. And then the family of six yeah. <laughs> came and uh, um, with, uh, you know, with lovely uh, energy mm. and... Uh, young children too. Young children. The youngest was one. Well, okay, yeah. One, I don't know, I don't know one, three, yeah. I'm guessing here, yeah, sorry, um, Anna, probably, uh, was six. Five and six, something yeah. about that. Uh, yeah, so um, that was interesting to see how different how different the families and the environment and the lives of the grand will be, and yeah. um, they all find um, the right way, huh? There's no, no yeah. question about yeah. it. It's all just happening. And as always, uh, we take you with us on our doggy walk. We have uh, our tribe is growing actually. Yeah, <laughs> we have four greyhounds, and now we have also four small dogs. And we all go on a stroll and show you this beautiful area where we live in, the beautiful New Zealand, as part of our lifestyle here. And this time we went to the Waira River. And the Waira River is the second largest river on the south, in, in mm -hmm. or on, in? In the south in island. The south yep. island. Of New Zealand. And it's the largest and the biggest um, uh, river anyhow that flows through Marlborough at the district we are living here. Um, and it uh, springs here somewhere in the southern Alps and becomes a huge and mighty river and goes into the Pacific Ocean just here um, at close to Rarangi Beach. Okay, shall we go into the show? Yeah, I yes, think so. Awesome. All right, so you enjoy. See ya. See you soon. Little darling, it's been a long, long racing season. Little darling, it's time to rest and find a home. Here comes the hounds, didn't you know? Here comes the hounds, and I say it's for life. Hounds for life. Hounds for life. Coming up is our interview with Fred and Linda and their lovely uh, brindle greyhound Harry, so that he's so cute. <laughs> so cute. Um, if they are living at Rarangi Beach, which is quite close uh, to the Hounds for Life uh, kennels, they have adopted uh, Harry from Night Rave, and we have briefly um, um, fostered him. 
just briefed. And then uh, actually you were to hear an interview, so funny story, they got the Greyhound before they even got their furniture. Yeah. They just re recently... No, but they said he had his furniture, which yeah. is the most important. They just recently moved here from uh, Sydney, Australia. Uh, and uh, we uh, are also having the joy to have Harry often uh, at Hounds for Life uh, as a Hounds for Holiday guest. Hello, um, we are here in beautiful Roaring Beach, uh, quite close to uh, Tiparanui Permaculture Homestead in Animal Sanctuary, where our Hounds for Life home base is. And we are here with a couple, Linda and Fred, and their houndy Harry. Harry was uh, fostered shortly, briefly, um, at Hounds for Life and then found his forever home in this absolutely gorgeous environment right next to the beach, beach view. And uh, Fred and Linda are so uh, kind to be with us on the show and tell all you guys out there how it is uh, to um, adopt an X-Racing Greyhound. <laughs> so that is actually my first question. How did you, how did you know you want a greyhound, and it's uh, supposed to be a retired uh, X racing greyhound? Over to you, Lindy Lou. That's yours. Oh, um, I always loved greyhounds. Um, we've always had dogs in the family, and. Um, we just, uh, yeah, I just loved uh, the idea of uh, adopting a greyhound and um, and this was just the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, oh my gosh. <laughs> and yeah. how did you uh, heard about um, the Greyhound Adoption Agency? Well, it, um, good old trade me, that's how we found yeah. out and I, had been stalking Harry on Trade Me for <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, a week or so. No, it was a couple of weeks, and Harry was there, and I kept on going, oh, I really like Harry. So it was basically love at first sight. Okay, no further words <laughs> for that. <laughs> and then tell me, how uh, did you prepare to bring him home? What was your concerns, or what was you, what was your thinking? Well, um, we had to make sure that because we'd new, uh, newly bought the house and uh, we had to make sure that the section was fenced, um, that he had comfortable beds. He's actually got um, three comfortable beds, but he sort of makes himself comfortable everywhere. <laughs> His greyhounds do. <laughs> And um, and yeah, just get the the the, nor the normal things like um, you know uh, we used to have a small dog, so we had to change to big bowls, oh, you know, for water, and um, and we had to get an elevated bowl for him and elevated bowl for his food as well. So yeah, there uh, there are little things and uh, that we've acquired along the way. Yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. So your house was all prepared, then how was your first day with Harry when he came? Um, it was funny because I, uh, we, we were used to, as Linda said, a, a small dog. And um, I wasn't quite sure how um, Harry would fit in and whether he'd uh, accept us. But um, Maya, convinced us to effectively bring him in and and uh, let him stay overnight from the first effectively the first day he got here and uh, within hours he was comfortable um, and I think within a few days he decided this was his place so it uh, it was it was a real easy transition um, and you can see he's, he's pretty comfortable Pretty happy. <laughs> yeah, <it's absolutely> stunning. <laughs> How long is it ago that he came home to you? Only four months. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we shifted in here in April, and uh, and in fact, that's the only reason for the delay in getting Harry. We probably would have got him earlier. I would have had to cave from Linda's pressure earlier if uh, <laughs> if it wasn't for the fact that we were living on a friend's vineyard 
So um, virtually the week we shifted in, uh, we still didn't have our furniture. We still didn't have our stuff from from uh, where we lived previously. Where and, was that? Uh, we were in Sydney. So um, yeah, we're still waiting for our furniture, but oh, we got our greyhound before all that turned up. He had all his furniture. <laughs> I bet so. <laughs> so um, how did you, or can you tell me a little bit about the routine that Harry is on? Harry, um, he, um, in the morning, he has a, a small, um, we get up around about uh, seven or eight, and he will either have a small breakfast, and, um, or sometimes what we do is we take him for a walk and then give him this breakfast. He's not, he's not a big breakfast, um, eater and he um so and then we um and then he comes back after us if he hasn't gone for a walk or or he's had his breakfast we wait an hour and then we'll go for a walk or something like that and um yeah and he has uh zoomies um yeah and what else does he do so yeah he gets at least one walk a day for about half an hour. Um, sometimes we'll take him for an afternoon walk. We just uh, gauge how energetic he is. It's not often that he's that energetic. Um, but he never <laughs> says no to a walk. So um, yeah, often we'll take him twice. And, uh, and then the zoomies. If we're doing something around the house, he follows us the whole time. And uh, like today, if we're gardening, he's out there and if he's up and about walking and following you, he, um, he's not asleep, which means that eventually he crashes and burns. He's just tired, very tired. <laughs> so, so, yeah, he prefers days when we're doing nothing because then he can sleep. <laughs> so. That sounds like a very greyhoundish greyhound. Yeah. Hey, um, we've got, when like I've been doing a lot of gardening lately and so when uh, when we're out in the garden he has another bed uh, a garden oh, bed. His, outdoor no bed. his outdoor bed that we take a blanket and he lies on his outdoor bed and he just thinks that's kind of cool as <laughs> well so, so yeah if um sometimes we take him to the new Renwick um dog park which is really great for a run or mm -hmm. we have been to Tapanui as well with a special greyhound run um he loves the car and um he actually went at, um we, we went all the way down to Kikawa um yesterday to see my mother and he was really good in the car loved it actually and um, one thing about greyhounds which I find a really are amazing is that they are so gentle and they seem to respond like my um, um, my mother and her new husband, uh, he, he's, he's quite frail and so I, I was constantly aware that uh, being a big greyhound, you know, he, uh, the poor, uh, he could um, t t knock, him over. knock him over, but he was so gentle and uh, really, um, he was really good down there so it was, he behaved himself. That sounds lovely. <laughs> so he probably loves the car because he knows something exciting is going to happen. Oh, he, he uh, yeah, he's pretty good with the car actually. <laughs> and he initially, because they're racing, uh, been racing, the trainers used to lift them up in the car, and he we'd have to lift him up in the car. But now. There's no hesitation whatsoever. <laughs> he jumps in the car. If you go it. and get the groceries and make the mistake of leaving the back of the car open, uh, you go back and find a greyhound and they're asleep. Because so you have to leave him there for yeah. an hour. I have to leave him there for an hour or take him for a drive. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's wonderful to hear. So um, it's uh, probably an odd question, but was there any challenge with having Harry? It sounds so easy going. Um, there, oh, there is a few challenges. He likes to dig holes, but we just have found that where he digs holes, we just plant lemon trees. <laughs> What a pragmatic so, <laughs> way. <laughs> so he's wrong. helping in the garden or things like that. And, and there, um, he does because Fred um, works from home and stuff. When we do go out, there is a little bit of anxiety, and that, that's that's just normal with a, a dog as well. What's he doing when he's uh, when you're leaving him alone? Um, he. Um, He's got this naughty habit. <laughs> he makes a nest in the bed. So he uh, roughs up the counterpane and the pillows and and then makes himself a little nest. And then we've got to come home and make the bed when we get home. But yes, so he we'll, dishes up the bed a bit. He's all right. We, we, can, we can deal with that. <laughs> so he's not ripping the pillows apart? No. Okay. No, 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 no. He just... Gives it the, the same sort of thing he does with his own, um, with his own bed and blanket. Just digs around in it and makes sure that it's comfortable, and then goes to sleep. So, oh, wonderful! Yeah, yeah so. that sounds really lovely. So, um, obviously, you cannot think of a life without Harry anymore. No. Uh, no. One thing sort of surprised us because our previous dog we had to. Um, uh, it was very sad in that we had to um, put him put him down due to dementia, and he also got an infection. But and that was a year ago, and we thought, you know, adopting a a, um, a new dog. How does that love transfer? But it was almost instantaneous. It was just unbelievable, and. There's still room, and and um, we still love our previous dog, but it's a new, it's a new joy that we've found. Wonderful, look at him, what gorgeous family photo. So I have um, ten questions for you. Yeah, are you ready for that? Right. First question: What is Harry's favourite treat? Pig's ear. Pig's ear. All right. <laughs> Second, how long was the longest dog you walked with him? Uh, probably about an hour. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he was pretty puffed after that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, we've we never walked him um, any longer than that because pretty much half an hour he uh, he's he's bushed. So, like he's slowing uh, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, and he's, you, you can tell when he's happy to go home. So... Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, third question. Uh, well, it's kind of answered already ish. <laughs> is Harry allowed in your bed? Or on your bed? Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, but the, we've got strict rule of, about that so that he knows that he's got to, during the night, he goes to bed at night um, and uh, and he goes in his own bed. He's only allowed in on up on um, our bed uh, in the morning for cuddles. And we, we had to work out a uh, a process for that because initially we would get up and let him out to go for a morning wee at six o'clock in the morning, and uh, find that we then had to race him back to the bedroom to see who got the best spot on the bed <laughs> and we realized that we had no chance of outrunning a greyhound so now now we have to get up to let him out we've got to close the bedroom door so he can't get back in before and us and so that we can have a con controlled advance an advance advantage of getting into the bed before he does otherwise but he, he loves his there. morning cuddles yes yeah. wonderful so what does Harry do when he's happy? He he sort of does a dance. Yeah, he, he? he does the bum wiggle. So uh, 
the, the, the whole the, the whole wiggly thing is when he's really happy. And so. he has uh, he's got two toys, a big um, big huge caterpillar and his um, giant caterpillar and his giant caterpillar is called Buggles. And uh, and then he's got a, a pony that he loves to bits as well. And the pony's name is Sparkles. And uh, so he'll play around with uh, He drags drags them into the lounge and then or, starts throwing them yeah, around. So. Or Sparkles, the pony, actually goes out in the garden and gets roughed up. <laughs> <laughs> um, does uh, Harry sleep in a pyjama? Yes, he does have his job. Yes, he does. Um, what does Harry do when he's demanding cuddles? Um, that's when with us um, and we allow him to do it but we don't like him doing it with um, guests he'll actually jump up oh. and, and put his hands on hands on our chest or his paws on our chest and uh, and that's when he's really really Excited to see, to see us. us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, cool. but yes, he yeah. seems to know who, who to do it. Mm. So what is the smartest thing Harry ever did so far? Weasel is way here. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good answer! <laughs> He's managed to, to secure himself a, uh, a uh, prime spot on the beach. <laughs> With a uh, nice house, and he didn't have to pay a dime. <laughs> <laughs> I think he pays it back with lots of love. He, he does. Oh, that's very smart of him. <laughs> I have to say. Um, is uh, Harry snoring? Uh, he he does snore gently sometimes, very rarely. But uh, you get the um, the the lips go with the old <laughs> <laughs> every now and then but yeah, yeah he's or, pretty quiet or if he's if you imagine uh, it's like he's trying he's, tra he's chasing a rabbit or something and he'll mimic and go oof, oof, oof. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful so um what is harry's favorite toy uh it's Probably his pony. Yeah, his okay. Pony. So we put a picture in there of his pony. Yeah. And uh, last question. Do you want an additional greyhound? <laughs> I would love one. But uh, Fred said last week, because I said, oh, uh, you know, I'd love a, 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 another one. Um, uh, Fred says, oh, I think you'll have to get a job to... <laughs> pay for the food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. Well, you will never know. That may all can happen. So, thank you so much to be on the show and to no share pleasure. your Harry journey with us. Um, and how about we say bye-bye now? Bye. Bye. Thanks. See ya. I hope you guys enjoyed our Harry segment. Um, I thought it was wonderful. I think he's such a wonderful dude and their family is just so sweet. Um, so up next we have an expert segment. I just want to say as a disclaimer that I am no expert in history, especially Greyhound history. However, I may be more of an expert in Greyhound no, history yeah, now no. <laughs> than I am actually in general history. Um, and I've just pieced together a bit of a slideshow for you guys to learn um, as you watch. I started approximately 8,000 years ago, which is where the first greyhound-like dogs appeared in ancient Egypt. Nobody knows how they appeared. They oh, just... well, everybody knows it. Oh. They were dropped from space oh. by aliens. Oh, yes. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. So they were dropped <laughs> from space um, into ancient Egypt approximately 8,000 years ago. And then I go through to Renaissance, which is the 16th century. And I will be doing from Renaissance through to modern day times in the next segment of this, which will be in an upcoming episode. Awesome. So have fun watching that. Cool. 
Hi everyone, welcome back to the expert segment on the Hounds for Life podcast series. Today we're going to go through the history of greyhounds from approximately 8,000 years ago. I'm not an expert in history, however I absolutely love greyhounds and I've been studying this somewhat for the past two weeks, so let's see how I go. Greyhounds are the oldest purebred dog, dating back to the time of the pharaohs in ancient Egypt. The first records of greyhound type dogs appear approximately 8,000 years ago. In ancient Egypt, greyhounds were revered as gods and only royalty were allowed to own them. All sighthounds today descend from the ancient greyhound. Many Egyptians considered the birth of such a hound second in importance only to the birth of a son, which is phenomenal. The ancestors of modern greyhounds were used in hunting and kept as companions, and their favourite companions of the upper class were mummified and buried with their owners. The walls of the Egyptian tombs were often decorated with images of their hounds, and the Egyptian god Anubis, you may recognise him as the god with the human body and the dog head, is frequently displayed on murals in the tombs of the pharaohs. The Greeks likely purchased their hounds from Egyptian merchants sometime before 1000 BC. In a Greek story, the hero Odysseus was away fighting for 20 years and upon his return to Ithaca, he wears a disguise. However, his sighthound Argos recognises him. Argos's traits that are detailed in the excerpt are similar to that of a greyhound, which is phenomenal, like we're talking so long ago, guys. Greek gods were also often portrayed with greyhounds and you can see many pictures online and I'm sure in history books for those of you who prefer history books you can see them and on this coin here in this slide they're slightly different but clearly very greyhound like it's very very creepy in a way <laughs> okay off we go to Rome the Romans obtained their greyhounds from either the Greeks or the Celts and Roman authors often referred to them as Celt hounds, which I thought sounded very similar to sight hounds. The Romans used their hounds for coursing, which is when the greyhounds go after a live hare. There is an excerpt here which states the impatient greyhound is held back to give the hare a fair start, which I thought was very sweet. Unlike modern day racing, the dogs did not compete against each other. Some of you may actually know this, but the only breed of dog mentioned by name in the Bible, in this instance the King James Version of the Bible, is the Greyhound. This is in Proverbs 30, 29-31. King James's translated, translators depicted from the Holy Bible that one girded in loins would likely have to be a Greyhound. This is quite possibly because... As well as the Romans, greyhound coursing was also popular with King James's court, so he was probably familiar with the breed. Still fascinating though, honestly. Alrighty, so greyhounds nearly became extinct in the Middle Ages during times of famine. They were, however, saved by clergymen who protected them and bred them for the nobility. In the 10th century, King Howell of Wales made killing a greyhound punishable by death and commoners were not allowed to own greyhounds. If they were caught owning one, then they were punished. Commoners who hunted with greyhounds, regardless of these laws, favoured colourings that were harder to spot, i.e. black, red, fawn and brindle. Nobles, by contrast, favoured white and spotted greyhounds who could be found and recovered if lost while hunting. This actually relates to modern day, as I've found that there is a little bit of a rarity with colours like spotted greyhounds or blue greyhounds. Obviously there were less royals, so there would have been less of these colours. It also became common among the English aristocracy to say that you could tell a gentleman by his horses and his greyhounds, which sounds very royal to me. On to Renaissance. So coursing races similar to Rome and King James, became very popular during the 16th century. Queen Elizabeth I, guys, the first Queen Elizabeth, oh my gosh, of England, from she, she ruled from 
1533 to 1603, actually had rules drawn up to judge the course and competition, which I feel is quite possibly where the modern greyhound racing actually came from. Even Shakespeare mentions greyhounds in his literature. Um, I see you stand like greyhounds in the slips, straining upon the start, the game's afoot. Follow your spirit, and upon this charge, cry God for Harry, England, and St. George. I'm honestly not sure really what that means, so if anyone can <laughs> translate that for me, that would be amazing. <laughs> okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that segment. Um, if you feel that I've missed anything, or you'd like to add anything, please comment below. Um, we are going to do another segment from the Renaissance through to modern day times. So I would love to see your comments and your additions. That would be awesome. How interesting, isn't that, to see um, how the greyhounds have been ruled the world <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> since so and many thousands of years so. <laughs> and thank you. unchanged actually right the Pretty breed much. has never changed if you look mm. at the pictures you'll be absolutely blown away that they look exactly as our retired yeah. greyhounds that's wow that's it's fascinating quite, quite strange mm. now you're gonna see another greyhound <laughs> picture but this time it is an illustration of a greyhound um, it is a digital illustration, so in our how-to segment I take you through how to draw a digital illustration of your greyhound. All you need is a tablet uh, that is capable um, to work with a pen, with a, like this electronic magic pens, whatever apple they are pen called, pen. apple pens or non-apple pens. Or you can get those little pads actually for computers. Yeah. And you plug them in and oh, yeah. like a draw pad. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So that's that's actually, yeah. if that works with a Procreate app, so that's what you yeah. need as well. Uh, and of course you need your Greyhound. Hello, great family. In today's how-to video, I take you through a very easy method how to make an animal illustration. In this case, how to draw your own Greyhound. All you need is a tablet, um, I use the iPad Pro or an Android tablet with a pen and an app which is Procreate in my case. I have sorted some photos and on the iPad Pro you can have a split screen so I put the photos aside of my Procreate app uh, that uh, I have opened up and make a new um, drawing there. I use Harry, beautiful Harry to, as today's model because he's featured in the owner's interview and I thought it would be lovely. Uh, to um, have him drawn today. So as you can see, I used a layer uh, in my Procreate app and a pencil tool to do some outlines of Harry's head. I um, refer to the photos that I put in the split screen and I think his basic features are a very long nose, which is dark, uh, oval eyes, a quite... Um, um, a little bit boxy um, top of the head and the ears are compared to his long nose quite small so these are the basic features and if you draw um, an animal illustration it has by no means be accurate in any way it's as an illustration and it should just depict um, the way you see the animal in this case your greyhound and it comes from the heart really and you put what you feel there um, onto either the canvas or in our case uh, in a digital format onto your um, tablet. So I'm still uh, using my pencil tool and one layer only to outline uh, the, the shape of, of Harry's head, where the eyes are located, the nose, the proportions, eyes, nose, um, length of head. And now I rescale it a little bit with my um, um, a selection tool because I do want to add a bit of a neck um, to, to this uh, drawing um, because we love the long necks of our greyhounds and they should be featured um, as well, I think, in this one. So far, um, I'm 
thinking the head is a little bit more uh, boxy so my lines are trying to reassemble that and the ears are a little bit more pointy so that's a little bit of a correction here and then um, a special feature of a greyhound is also that uh, he has a little bit of a bump on the top of the head which is subtle but you see it and it makes the illustration uh, quite greyhoundish when you apply that. So I'm done with my draw pencil drawing. I'm happy with that. I make a new layer. In this new layer, um, I will choose a studio pen and a color that is matching the basic color of Harry's uh, coat, which is a reddish chocolate brown, lovely color, warm. So I choose this color on my palette and I'm now outlining after I on a new layer uh, after I have um, uh, put the opacity down for my pencil layer and now in the new layer I'm outlining with the color I have chosen the the head and the top of the ears and that's going to be one layer and you have to make sure that all the lines are connected then you can fill in you can you can use a fill in tool to fill in with your color and don't worry about the shape um, that is uh, uh, as you can see um, the, the lines are not not quite straight that's all good we can all fix it later if we want to but remember it's an animal illustration this doesn't need to be perfect and uh, then i choose a new layer for the neck because it is in the dark in the shadow and we want to um, uh, depicture that and as you can see you have to put the top layer on top and the bottom layer on bottom so the neck has to go back behind the head and the same layer because it's the same color the same shadow are the is the shadow or the the the, the lower part of the ears that needs um, some outlines here and some fill-ins with a slightly darker color that you choose on your color palette a word on color is that, of course, it's an animal illustration and it's really fun to not actually use the natural colors. You can go to blues and greens and reds and pinks and make it really fun and look. And if you have the basic features of your greyhound captured in your illustration, um, it doesn't really matter what color you use. It will be definitely the right one. And um, everybody will recognize um, who that actually is. The great thing, what I love it about digital drawing is that you can um, just with a pinch of your fingers zoom in and out of your drawing and go into details and fix it with your eraser tool. Uh, that's one feature that I really much love and I come to um, really like the idea of doing some basic outlines and fill-ins and then use the eraser tool and do some finer lines with it uh, rather than trying to use your pencil to do the fine line work. I think it works a lot better with the eraser tool. So now we do more layers um, because every uh, new uh, feature of the drawing has an own layer. So we are coming to the black layer, which is the eyes and the nose. And here you can use the edit shape tool, the automatic ed editing out of a shape, which is great. And as you can see, I'm not happy with the second eye. Normally the eyes are never the same if you draw two. So what I do, I do my lasso and selection tool and uh, copy and paste uh, the, right eye, uh, the left eye and just uh, um, flip it over to the side and have, on the, um, and have the right eye matching and, and the same. Now we fill it in with black, pitch black. That's always a good choice uh, for nose and eyes uh, in the greyhound, as long as it's not a blue greyhound and has uh, green eyes, of course. And then uh, this layer is pretty much done. That was a quick one. Um, I just find some details that I want to work on before I forget it um, and make the outlines more neat. So that's all done with the eraser tool. And then a quick look and yep that's all looking good and then i find oops we need a little bit of an operation here because the nose is not long enough so with the lasso tool and on the right layer i cut out 
the uh, top of the nose and just move it a little bit away, extend it a little bit. And then we also have uh, to move the nose down to the end uh, of, of the face. So this looks all good. And we can continue with doing the next layer, which will be the highlight layer. For the highlights, always choose a, just the white and decide where the light comes from. In this uh, illustration, the light comes from the top left. So the highlights would go about there where the eyes would reflect the light. And then on the nose, the highlight always looks good. In an illustration, it's just um, just one stroke of your pencil tool or your pen tool, and I made it a little bit smaller. Yeah, that looks good. So some corrections go in the layer if you find something you want to work on with your eraser tool. And do that while you see it. And then, yeah, we are almost, we are getting there. Starting to look like a greyhound. I just checked by taking the neck layer out if the nose sits right and it was and then at the top of the head becomes a bit of a better shaping and then the next part what's not following is the fun part because now you are getting to put all the textures in and make um, this uh, illustration come to life so what you do is you choose every layer um, that you have drawn on, which is the neck, the head, and the ears, and make a clipping layer on top. And this clipping layer is preventing you to draw over the outlines of um, the part that you have already drawn. And I choose another pencil in this um, um, a pencil tool, which is the crayon, and put the opacity down and the size up and play around a little bit. And of course, choose another color. And that's um, what I'm trying here now to find a good color for the neck, which is a darker part. So it should be in the shadow. I was playing around with red. I didn't like it. So I'm going to the orange uh, kind of palette and a darker one. And yep, that looks much better. So I'm going ahead with that. And with the clipping mask, you can just stroke over and you don't need to worry about the outlines. It will always stay. And now we are going to the head. The head is a different color. I tried to use the same color, but I didn't like the matchy match of the color. So um, I have to find another color for the head, especially for the dark parts of the nose. Um, this is the fun bit. You can, because you can always redo with two tip, with two finger, with a tip of, with a tap of two fingers on your um, iPad, you can always redo in Procreate. You can uh, redo what you have done. So it's so easy. You don't need to worry about any mistakes. You can decide all over again how to do something, which color to choose, which pencil tool. And I chose a richer brown, dark brown color for the nose. And I think that's quite lovely. And I start to darken the nose and then go all over the head. And oops, that was not in the clipping layer. So you can see it goes over the outline. So you go back to your clipping layer when you want to put on the texture for your illustration. And the nose obviously is a lot darker. So it becomes um, darker with your pencil strokes. And it gives it immediately more character to your drawing. And now we are creating more layers on top of the clipping layers because we want to put highlights on. Um, so remember where your light comes from. It comes from the top, a little bit left. The highlights, the size of the crayon to, uh, pencil goes way up and um, the color is way down, uh, way higher, so um, I mean lighter. So you choose a really bright brown there and you come in from the top left corner and 
I mean, instantaneously you have highlights all over your head and you can play with that around more or less as much as you want and because you put the top of the ears and the head in one layer they all get the same highlights that is important uh, and the bottom uh, of the ears and the neck doesn't get the highlights because it's not in the same layer and of course they are in the shade uh, and so they wouldn't be highlighted as much And that makes actually your little animal illustration looking really uh, real in a way. Or shall I say, come to life. Now, as you see, we are not putting any other shadows in because remember, it's an illustration. Um, we don't want to go through 3D. And when you think we are finished, we do some very basic calligraphy strokes and write the name in with a black calligraphy pen that you find in the um, ink pen that you find in your um, drawing tools. And we, we can do some corrections just with the eraser tool. Uh, we can outline the downstrokes a little bit more to let it look so it looks um, a lot more like hand calligraphy and then we can also add some and then do some final touches with your eraser tool just make it looking nice and neat looking and when you are done with that I mean you can take it to um, every extent of perfection here of course if you're done with that you can also decide if you want a background, if you want some uh, background color, or in my case, I have chosen some background shapes and colors. Um, that is kind of the overall theme of my Greyhound illustrations. And I start to think about it. I think I'm gonna match Harry on a new layer with uh, with the star and the uh, bright greens that would look just awesome on him and here it comes final touch and here's your animal illustration have fun great community and leave a comment if you like it or if you have a question So that was pretty cool, your drawings. Thank you. I'm gonna actually give it a go and see if Good. I can do it. Yes. Because I think on a Mac you can have a, you can change your little scratchy mouse pad to a pen pad. Oh, yeah. interesting. So now we're gonna launch into um, our foster of the fortnight, which as we said, is Bruce. Hi everyone, today I'm here with Brucey, well Bruce, his race name was Ahuroa Panther and he is a four year old, nearly five year old greyhound <laughs> and he is so handsome and so sweet and he's looking for his forever home. I'm come on my knee. He's not so sure about the couch but don't worry with time, he'll get used to it. Why don't you Brucey? Hey, he's very cuddly. Um, and he's not bad with small dogs. We just tried him out with one of our smallest and he's quite interested, but he's very good. There we go. Good boy, Brucey. <laughs> now he's a lap dog. Hey, Brucey. When Bruce came um, to the live-in kennels, he was pretty thin and not so well, um, but he's really getting there. He's slowly putting on weight and he's coming out of his shell he's so cute uh, um and he is actually molting at the moment which is why he's a bit fluffy um he's molting out and he's coming through into his handsome coat 
It's a very sleek, handsome coat. Um, Bruce would make a really, really good family dog, um, but he could also go to a family with someone who works all day. Um, I don't think he would mind. He's very quiet and very calm and very chill. He's a very chill dude. Hey, Bruce. Yeah. And Bruce's sister um, came to us as well. Her name was Sprite. She was a brindle and she went to a really lovely man in Westport. It was awesome to see her go to her new home. She actually went to a home with cats, which was really awesome. She was so good with them. Hey, Bruce. Yeah, you miss your sister. <laughs> Uh, Brucey is such a nice man! Brucey needs a home! Hey Bruce. Okay everyone, so that's our story on Bruce. Please contact us if you're interested in him. Um, he's really, really wonderful. And yeah, awesome. See yous! Little darling, it's been a long, long racing season. Little darling, it's time to rest and find a home. Here comes the hounds, didn't you know? Here comes the hounds, and I say it's for life. Hounds for life. Hounds for life. Last but not least, we are going on a walk at the Wairau River and uh, we hope to see you again with our next episode, mm -hmm. episode number four. Whoa. Which, oh, which that one? means it's been like over a month. Yeah, that of we've course. Been doing this. Every fortnight, so it's the second month. And um, we are very welcoming comments um, because we're at the beginning of designing the show and we really wanted to keep going and doing it and we are very we want to show you guys what you want to see so mm -hmm. please comment um, what you want to see or greyhound related and please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell next to the subscribe button so that each time we upload you get a notification my man constantly tells me when we've uploaded he's like oh, you've uploaded a new video <laughs> <laughs> that's like, fantastic that's why you click the notification bell yeah, yeah. that's really important uh, of course, you can also stroll over to our website, houndsforlife.nz, mm -hmm. for further information, especially about uh, the grants we have for adoption or and homestays. homestays and everything, all these informations. And we have a very active Facebook uh, page as well. And we are pretty much daily sharing yep. on Facebook and Instagram what we are up to yep. and our greyhounds. So don't forget to do that. <laughs> we definitely want to see you again in two weeks. So until then, enjoy. Bye. See you later.
What? No, no. <laughs> They do not private message us. No! Oh, far out! <laughs> YouTube channel. Okay.